Hi everyone, my name is Melissa and this is how to adopt. Today's video is part 6 of 101 money saving tips. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to put your best bad joke in the comments below. If you haven't seen the other parts, click up here or check in the description for the link below. And with that, let's get started. Tip 70 is to make it harder to carry more items. For example, if you go into the shops for just some milk and some bread, then use a basket or the smaller trolley as opposed to the normal ones. Because this way it limits the amount of space and your ability to physically move more items. Therefore, you can't actually spend more. Throughout the years, shopping centres have actually increased the size of their trolleys in order to kind of trick you into buying more items. So don't fall for it. And it's the same if you're going shopping for anything else. Just get a small bag and that's all you can carry and limit yourself to that. The way that you can physically transport these things can remind you of how much you're spending and how much you need to just stop. Tip 71 is to watch your utilities use. Now I know this is easier said than done, but a perfect example of watching your utility use is if you have solar panels, use the most electricity during the day because not only are you going to be using your own solar power first, when you use electricity at night, it's more expensive anyway. You can also make sure none of your taps are leaking. Get a rainwater tank and use that water to water the garden. And if things are really dire, you can do simple things such as cooking your meals on a fire pit or a barbecue out your backyard. There is plenty of places that do have some free firewood available. You just got to look for it. And if things are really bad, you can also have a bucket bath. Now, a lot of people turn their nose up at this, but it's really not that bad. A few years ago, our gas was having some maintenance done, so we couldn't use the hot water. So I had to warm up the water in the kettle, get myself a bucket of water, funny enough, and soak myself up with that. And you know what? It wasn't that bad. I still managed to get clean, and I was fresh and ready to go out. Tip 72 is to leave your bank cards at home. Find somewhere safe to put them, somewhere where you're not going to lose them. And leave them at home. You can't spend the money if you don't have your card with you. And that same goes with those cash apps. Delete them and then you don't have the chance to spend the money. Which leads us to tip 73. Emergency cash. Now this is basically for when you're going to work and you've left your card at home and you realise that you've accidentally left your lunch at home. And you don't want to go hungry for the rest of the day. So you have some emergency cash that is limited of how much you're able to spend, but is there available in case you need something. Tip 74 is to refinance. Now I have mentioned collaborating all your debt into one loan and paying off your loan faster, but you can also refinance these things, particularly with your home loans. Rates change all the time and banks are very, very competitive to get your home loan. So check around, see what we can do. We can contact Aussie Home Loans and our person will regularly check if there is a better deal for us. So consider that. Tip 75 is to downsize or share. If you're renting a place or have a home that's a bit large and you don't need all that space, then get rid of it, sell the house, move out of the rental and either get a smaller property that is more cost effective and suits your needs a little better or find people you can share the space with. Every dollar counts and having a person to share does help a lot as long as you guys get along all right. Tip 76 is to relocate. Now, sometimes you just have to pack up and leave if the area isn't working for you. This goes for rental costs, buying a house costs, the actual economy in the way of work, all of those factors. 
sometimes you just have to relocate and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to a better area or a place that's just as good sometimes you have to go somewhere worse now my husband and I when we were renting used to live in an area that was not high class but it was average we then had to buy a place that was in the more industrial area so not as good however we were able to get a three bedroom house for really cheap actually and it was because we decided that it was worth the move to a different area so while some things can be a bit scary think about it and decide what it is that you want and whether or not it's worth it tip 77 is to invest in your health now in 2012 and 2013 a study was done on workplace injuries and illnesses and they found out that 61.8 billion dollars was lost now you might think to yourself who cares that's the company that's not my problem well guess what 77 percent of those costs fell on the employees now i don't know about you but that's a lot of money to waste and quite frankly you should be more concerned about your health than most other things in the world if you're unable to work you're not going to be able to get a steady income if you're in pain all the time you're not going to have a happy life investing in your health is extremely important so go see your local doctor and start working on a plan to make sure you can be as healthy as you can not just for the money but for you now this is the part where I'm going to start getting annoying but too bad it's happening tip 78 is to stop smoking yeah I said it before and I'll say it again till I'm blue in the face a packet a day smoker will spend about ten thousand dollars a year on cigarettes to me that is ridiculous you're paying ten thousand dollars a year to slowly kill yourself come on where's the mess in that but wait there's more two out of three long-term smokers will either have their life expectancy reduced by 10 years or they will die of a smoke related disease diseases such as cancer breathing difficulties heart disease stroke diabetes infections gum disease they can lose their teeth have hearing loss vision loss fertility issues this goes for the boys too and menopause and osteoporosis sounds like a lot of fun doesn't it it also affects your mental health such as increasing your anxiety panic attacks depression suicide attempts and schizophrenia this thing just gets better and better now you might be thinking to yourself it's fine it's my body I can do whatever I want I'm gonna be fine first of all that's not true let's just be honest here and second of all it's not just you Passive smoking can do just as much damage as actual smoking can too. They can still die from the same diseases. And for every eight smoker who dies from smoke-related diseases, one non-smoker who was around secondhand smoke will also die from smoke-related diseases. And if you live with a smoker, you are 25 to 30 percent higher risk of heart disease. So again, it doesn't just affect you. Never mind the fact that people are going to be pretty upset that you're dying or dead. My dad died of lung cancer. I watched him die and I got to tell you, it didn't look like fun to me. Tip 79 is to reduce or stop drinking. Now I know what you're going to be thinking. An Australian who doesn't like to drink. Well, yeah, I don't really like to drink that much. We all know the short term effects of drinking alcohol. You start to feel a little bit tipsy maybe you start losing your coordination so unless you can stone cold sober like me I'm very unco and then your inhibitions go out the window and you start making stupid decisions such as getting in your car and driving off like an idiot but there are actually a lot of long-term effects too for example you can get oral throat and breast cancer and breast cancer affects the boys too don't think that you're free from it just because you don't have a pair of you know what is you can also get liver psoriasis brain damage increasing of dementia and heart 
disease and stroke. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Now it's alright to have a drink every now and then, as long as you know what your limits are. And if you think you have a problem, please get help. Because I can tell you, you do not want to be that alcoholic person because it is damaging beyond your imagination, trust me. Tip 80 is to not do drugs. In this day and age, I don't know why I need to keep telling you to stop doing drugs. It is not a good idea on any level. Now I've done some research on a lot of the more common drugs and some of the long-term effects of these include malnutrition, mood swings and depression, psychosis such as hearing voices or seeing hallucinations, itchy sores, changes to your brain function that can be permanent. Also you're able to resist the infections less and you have sleeping problems. Sounds like a ton of fun. Now opiates are some of the most common drugs that people will take mostly because their prescription they think they're fine they're not fine they're dangerous now opiates include things like heroin and fentanyl and i'm going to tell you fentanyl is unbelievably dangerous even drug dealers will tell you to be careful with fentanyl now used professionally in a hospital or a doctor setting fentanyl is perfect however you just take a little bit too much and you're dead. No questions asked, just dead. So I wouldn't risk that if I were you. More than two in five people who take drugs will participate in crime. And this is probably usually to get more drugs. One in 10 people aged 14 and up are the victim of someone who's under the influence of drugs. This includes verbal and physical assault. And less than three in one victims and offenders took drugs before a homicide. You see, think about that. Three in ten took drugs before they were either killed or they killed someone else. Now, drugs are not fun. They hurt you and they hurt the people around you. Yeah, I'm on that annoying person who says drugs are bad and okay. Well, yeah, they are. Now I have heard of a drug that is so toxic and foul that it will burn your skin if you drop it on yourself. And people inject this into their bodies. If it's burning your skin, what do you think that's doing to the inside? And it doesn't take long for things to get through your blood system all around your body. So you're not just hurting yourself, you're hurting others. So I'm begging you, do not start. And if you started, Stop. Tip 81 is to invest in your mental health. One in five people aged from 16 to 85 will experience at least one form of mental illness in any given year. Now, the investment in your mental health is a perfect thing to invest in. It controls everything. Your mind controls your body, how you feel, everything. So you need to take care of your mental health. A perfect example of this is 75% of homeless adults have some form of mental illness. One third of them have a severe disorder. So that affects every aspect of their life. The government spends $4.7 billion in programs. Personally, I think it should be more. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And it costs between 10 and 15 billion dollars in production. Now that's billion dollars in production that may be for the company, but affects you directly. If you can't function on a simple level, you can't function in order to help yourself, help others, and more importantly, you deserve to be happy and healthy. So now that I've finished telling you all off, I will end this on a nice joke. I used up all my sick days. So I called him dead. Don't think they're going to fall for it though. <laughs> if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to write your best bad joke in the comments below. I'd really love to hear from you. And I'll see you next week. Bye.